All right, that's it for Taylor series. Are they complicated? Yes. Yes, they are. Are they useful? Oh, yes, they are. Taylor series are great. But we still have not answered that one question. Why? Why does the formula for Taylor series look like that with all those complicated factorials, multi-index weirdness all over the place? Well, there's another way to write out the Taylor expansion that is going to look really familiar to you if we just do a second order expansion. So I got a function f, I'm at an input a, let's add a perturbation term h to it. Then f of a plus h is f of a, the zeroth order term, plus the derivative of f of a times h using matrix vector multiplication, and then divided by one factorial. Yeah, okay, that doesn't do anything. Now look at the second order term. There's a way to write out all of the second derivatives of f packing them into a matrix, and then using that matrix as a quadratic form, uh, multiplying by uh, h transpose on the left, h on the right, and then dividing the whole thing by two factorial. That looks a lot like the sort of standard way of doing things. And again, this all rests on the second derivative thought of as a matrix, often called the Hessian, and this is, this is exactly what you think it is. It's the n by n matrix whose ijth entry is the second partial of f with respect to xi and xj in that order. So along the diagonals, you have the pure second partials, second partial of f with respect to x1, etc., etc. Now, again, because mixed partials commute, this is a symmetric matrix. If I, if I look at ij, the same as ji, and packing all of these second derivatives into this square matrix is going to wind up being really useful to us, especially in analyzing second order terms in a Taylor expansion. Now you can look at this. This makes sense. This looks like the way we used to do Taylor series, but what? Oh, it's bonus time, double bonus in this chapter. What's going on? Can you use matrices for the third order terms, for the fourth order terms, etc.? Well, no, you can't use matrices. But yes, you can use something like a matrix, but it's not going to be a two-dimensional array. It's going to be a higher dimensional array. These things are called tensors, of which matrices are really a special, simple form. And their algebraic structure is really rich, it's intricate, it's interesting, but it's, well, it's kind of beyond the bounds of what we can do in this course. Nevertheless, you should know that it exists. You should also know that, wow, we have to be really careful when it comes to Taylor series. There's so many things we have not touched on. We've not talked about error estimation, which was so important to us way back in single variable calculus. Are there error estimates? Yes, there are, but you're going to have to look those up yourself. We're not going to go over those. We've also not dealt with convergence. Remember, not all Taylor series converge, and one has to be careful. Now, there is a notion of convergence tests. There is a radius of convergence for these series. It gets a little more complex in this case. Was that a joke? Yeah, that was kind of a joke. But we're not going to cover that at all. You're going to have to learn some of that stuff on your own. Good luck.